start here. I came across an article this morning that put me in somewhat of a cross mood. Apparently, nearly 75% of Bernie's, Bernie Sanders supporters, burners, are on Team Joe. You heard that right. Roughly 75% of people who voted for Sanders, who pushed for Sanders, who supported Sanders, are also now backing Joe Biden. The other 25 odd percent or so um, either goes to Trump, either goes to third party, or is just not voting. That number is not high enough. 75%. That means the overwhelming lion's share of people who back Sanders, who the party basically attacked as being sexist, racist, um, who um, Warren attacked as being a foundation of hate. Those guys are now going to go to the party that slandered and slammed him in that way and that they continuously complain, oh, they're not accepting our policies. Oh, they're not listening to me. Oh, we're being marginalized. Oh, they're taking advantage of me. Let me ask you something. Is there anything that the Democratic Party can do where you would walk away and say, yeah, I'm not voting for that. You're not going to get my vote on that particular issue. Is there anything? And if there is not anything, why are you complaining that you're being taken advantage of? Of course you're being taken advantage of. It is incentivized them to take advantage of you in that scenario. Do you know right now, right now, the Joe Biden campaign is in the middle of a dilemma. That dilemma basically boils down to whether or not Joe Biden should bring on somebody for vice president that is an African-American woman or somebody who has some degree of lefty bona fides. Now, why is that his dilemma? The dilemma has to do with whether or not he has the left vote sewn up or whether or not he has a black vote sewn up. And depending on the one that he has sewn up, he will be going to the other one. Meaning if Joe Biden believes that he is going to get African-Americans in sufficient numbers that he doesn't necessarily need to bring a black woman onto the team, then he is going to get a lefty and try to shore up the lefty vote. If he believes that the other is true, he is going to try to shore up the black vote. Understand what, I'm just, what I just told you. Depending on the person or depending on the group that Joe Biden believes he already has in the bag, Joe Biden will go to the other group that he does not have in the bag. Why? Because Joe Biden wants to win. And his objective is to essentially move to the area, either through just basically identity reasons or in the, his rhetoric, to get that coalition that he's missing. This is kind of my point, right? Basically, if you're willing to vote for pretty much anything, why should they give you anything? You've been able to give over your support for the last 40 years without getting anything in return for that particular support. And that particular trend, that unfortunate trend, continues right now. Are you not tired of ineffectual Democrats? Are you not tired of not being proud of the people who you're voting for, or not being proud of the people you're putting into that office, or only voting for a particular person because of who they are not, as opposed to an affirmative case in regards to who they are? You understand that when you're looking at your political system and you're shaking your head at it, and you're angry at it, you're waving your fist at it, that a lot of it has to do with having no accountability in the political process, especially from the standpoint of the left. It is the left that goes into this notion of dealing with the hard realities of capitalism and trying to ameliorate those concerns within the population. It is the left that deals with this kind of progressive policy, either the expansion of social security or ensuring that each and every person is Medicare. What that means is if it's not the left that is attending to that, nobody is. You're not shocked or you're not curious on why economics all of a sudden was taken off the table in regards to debate going back after the New Dealers. You're not weirded out or either um, interested and why Bill Clinton and Obama, for the most part, threw their body on Wall Street or linked themselves into corporate interests as opposed to lefty progressive policy. It's not magic. It has everything to do with the incentives built into the system. If you are willing to give your vote over to any random Democrat because you are terrified of Republicans, then you will get a Democrat that will look a lot like a Republican because basically you've removed accountability from the process. We look at elections oftentimes, especially from the way that people are being told from year to year to year, meaning in four years and then another four years and another four years. My point here is that elections can't be looked at in terms of four years. It has to be looked at over the context of time. From year to year to year, as you have one election to the next, if you're only looking at those as narrow items, then you may actually miss the fact that your country is sliding further and further and further to the right. Why? 
because there's been nothing in the political process to stop it from doing that. Meaning, because you're so willing to vote for any random Democrat, there's no incentive in the process for Democrats to not just keep going to the right. They're going to keep collecting the money. They're going to keep doing favors of corporate interests. You have dollars and pitchforks, and there are no pitchforks to stop those dollars. Listen to Andrew Cuomo for the moment. Andrew Cuomo is talking about the homeless in New York. Listen to, listen to what he's saying here, because this is kind of getting to my point. Are you not sick of ineffectual Democrats? And don't you want to get to the point where you could actually vote for something that you want, the policies that you want? Don't you want to have policies that you could be proud of, that you could push for, that's going to materially benefit the population and drag more people into the polling process? Or maybe you don't. Let's hear Cuomo. The front page is a picture of a subway car filled with homeless people and uh, their belongings. Asset, respect the essential workers. That is uh, disgusting what is happening on those subway cars. It's disrespectful to the essential workers who need to ride the subway system. Now, here's the thing. Two things can be true at once. It can be disgusting if people are using the bathroom on the subway, whether those people are homeless or not. By the same token, the issue here is not that they're using the bathroom on the subway. The issue is that they're homeless. If you had somebody who was worth their salt and you had a certain, let's say, accountability, you wouldn't have a particular person come out and say something like that where they're basically attacking the homeless. Again, the issue is that they don't have a home. Yes, it is bad that they're going to the bathroom in the subway but on order of concerns, if you get rid of the fact that they don't have a home, the other issue goes away. I hope you understand what I mean. Aren't you sick of voting for Democrats that will get out there and say something like that? Let's hear Pelosi. Pelosi is in Congress right now. She's in the, she's in the House of Representatives. She's the leader of the House, Speaker of the House. Let's hear Pelosi and her grand ideas. Well, let us do it all together. This is a moment of truth for our country about who we are. What is the humanity of America? Uh, we wanted to support the small businesses. They are the vitality of our economy, the dreams that people have, uh, the entrepreneurship, the risk they're willing to take for an idea. And so that's why we all gathered and wrote the PPP uh, for that, so that we can try to reach as many people as possible uh, for their jobs and their businesses. Just so we're clear. Uh, but that was not was being done in Jim a way Kramer. that reached the under- Jim Cramer on Mad Money Who Does Stocks. Jim Cramer basically asked her, hey, how do we deal with this two Americas thing where you have one for the rich and one for the poor? Don't we need to do something else? That was Pelosi's answer. We put in the PPP. Basically, she didn't answer at all. She didn't have an answer. Why didn't she have an answer? This is supposed to be the party that deals with the hard edges of the capitalistic system, right? Well, you have a capitalist asking another capitalist, how are we going to deal with the hard edges of capitalism? And she has no answer. Not just not have an answer, she goes into the PPP where she didn't really get anything out of that deal. She eventually says more testing, as if more testing deals with the hard edges of the capitalistic system. My, my point is basic. Until you get to the point where you support policy and not just ideologically, rigidly support a party out of fear as opposed to supporting somebody who you actually have an affirmative case to make for, then you will always get a race to the bottom and you will get always these ineffectual, worthless politicians that do not deal with the, or that don't deal with the hard edges of our system. Bob, you have to deal with the fallout from the politicians not dealing with the hard edges of our capitalistic system. What do you have to say about this? Because, you know, I'm not an activist per se. Well, I do the channel, but that's not the same thing as being out there on the streets and um, going after people, but you do. And you have to attend to these needs, whether it's food, whether it's helping people get resources and whatnot. What do you have to yeah. say to these ineffectual Democrats and people who are continuing to vote for these guys? Well, I, I think on one end, this party is completely broken because of identity politics. This conversation around like pick a black woman or pick a lefty, that all is about identity politics. It's not yeah, about ideology. Right. It's not about policy. It's not about complimentary. I mean, if it was about picking black women, pick Muriel Bowser of Washington, D.C. I, I constantly am beating up on London Breed of San Francisco, Keisha Lance Bottoms. If it's about just picking a black woman, you can end up with a black woman that supports neoliberal policies. That's right. Constantly Rice supported George W. Bush. That You want that black woman? Does that count? And so this shallowness of just picking somebody because they're a black woman for me is so irritated. And ultimately, picking a black woman speaks more to white 
people, I think, in general that want to feel like they're woke and they feel cool and this respectability politics that we can include black people in our decision making. It has nothing to do with the actual ideologies that they're purporting to support. So that's on one end. The other end is the Cuomo stuff is so disgusting to me. I mean, talk about the disrespect we have towards humans to close mental health facilities, the disrespect to get rid of hospital beds, the disrespect of closing shelters. What about all the disrespectful things these billionaires and multimillionaires have done to that city to completely make it a playground for the, the richest of this world? But where's the disrespect to them? Nobody has a pl- platform to speak out. You're not giving a microphone to these homeless people that are sleeping in these trains and saying, well, what do you think of Andrew Cuomo? And so Cuomo using the bully puppet just to beat down and berate these people is absolutely disgusting when they're the ones actually making the decisions that have left people in this state. And so I don't give them a pass whatsoever. And it completely makes them incredibly feckless and, and ineffective to say the least, Jamar. And I I don't know when people break from that because you are seeing all these people that supported Sanders now going to Joe Biden. And and for many people, after four years of Donald Trump, you simply said anything is better than this guy and we'll go along with Joe Biden. I I just don't think it's going to hold. And we'll talk more later on in the show about uh, Joe Biden's sexual assault allegations and our Trends with Benefits, our weekly Thursday segment. But again, the party without ideology and a party without leaders, Joe Biden is no leader. The guy's falling asleep. So you have no leader (laughs) and you have no strong policy and you're stuck with identity politics and shallow policy. I mean, it's shallow politics tomorrow. It is. And that's that's exactly what it is. I mean, look, I'm, I'm beyond the point of just going with this notion that, okay, this person is not a Republican. Because the problem is that by not having a race to the bottom or by not, um, by not having a bar at the door, you end up with a situation where you get worse and worse and worse. You don't have any standards. So it's like, yeah. even if it's a situation where the Democratic Party loses, then the party loses. At the very least, you start to create some level of credibility and integrity in the political process where everything doesn't just go. That needs to change. Yeah, absolutely, Jamar. We'll talk about that and much more over the course of our show today. We're here until 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.